Welcome to today's video on inverse trig functions. You notice that I have my unit circle out, so if you don't have your unit circle out, go ahead and get it out. Press pause and get that out. We are going to start by reviewing some things that we've learned about the unit circle. We want to find some values based on this unit circle. So I want the cosine of pi, 5 pi over 6. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go to my unit circle and I want to find out where is 5 pi over 6. And I see that that is going to be right here at 150 degrees. And because I'm looking for a cosine, remember a cosine is the x coordinate of that point. So at 5 pi over 6, I'm looking at the x coordinate. So the answer here is a negative root 3 all over 2. Next one, I want the cosine of 7 pi over 6. So I look at my unit circle, I find 7 pi over 6. We're still looking at cosine, so we're still looking at the x coordinate. So I want a negative root 3 over 2. Switching it up here, now we want the sine of 5 pi over 6. So we were just at 5 pi over 6, that 150 degree marker. Sine is referencing the y coordinate. So when I look at that ordered pair, the y coordinate is 1 half, and then we want the sine of 7 pi over 6, so back down to 210, the sine is a negative 1 half. So for those two angles, 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6, we found the x and the y coordinate that went with both of them. How are the cosine values related? So when I look at the cosine, they both are a negative root 3 over 2. So how are they related? They are exactly the same. And why are they, they both are a negative root three over two. It's important that you think about what does that mean? Cosine X is representing your horizontal shift. Because it is negative, we see that both of these points, five pi over six and seven pi over six, both of those are left 3 pi over 2 of the origin. That's why they have the same x coordinate. Although they are in different positions, both of them have from the origin gone left negative root 3 over 2. Now your y values, those sine values, they're related. They're not the same, but they are opposites. They are not reciprocals. Reciprocals are when you flip the numerators, they are opposite. We have one positive and we have one negative. So here they both are one half away vertically. But when you look at five pi over six, from the x-axis we're going up a half making that a positive one half. And for seven pi over six, we're going down one half, which gives it a negative one half. So they both are moving one half away from the origin vertically, but one goes up one half, making it positive, and the other goes down one half. So this one is our positive and this one is our negative. So those ordered pairs are all talking about what direction and how far you're going. Now our inverse trig is going the opposite direction. So instead of me telling you which angle to look at and then asking for the x or the y or the tangent, I'm going to give you a measurement. So I'm telling you that the number that I'm looking for, the ratio I'm looking for, is a negative root 3 over 2. And I'm telling you that the cosine of some angle is a negative root 3 over 2. I'm asking you to tell me what angle would that be. So we just did that. If I'm looking at my unit circle going all the way around, cosine, which is x, I'm asking which angle is left root 3 over 2 from the origin. That's in two spots. That's at 150 and that's at 210. So you have two answers. That's true for two different angles. 5 pi over 6, which is at that 150 
angle degree, but it also occurs at 7 pi over 6, which is that 210 degree marker. And if I asked you, well, what angle has a sine value of 1 half? Remember, sine is your y. So I'm asking, which angles would I move up 1 half? So if I'm going up here, I'm going up 1 half. We already talked about this one. That is 5 pi over 6, which again is that 150 degree angle marker. But that happens somewhere else. I'm going up 1 half, not only at 150, but I'm also going up 1 half at 30 degrees, which is going to be pi over 6. So hopefully you're catching on now that no matter where you are, or whatever x value or y value you're looking for, there's always going to be two possibilities. Because when I move left, if I move left or right, I'm going to have two possibilities. If I went down one half, I could move down one half here, I could move down one half here. There's always going to be two angles that correspond. So inverse trig functions are functions are used to find the angle measures. given the ratio of the trig function. So we're just doing everything we talked about yesterday, but in reverse. So the measures of the angle could be a number of coterminal angles, but we only use the value that corresponds to the unit circle. So when we said that we had a sine value of 1 half, and it could be 30 degrees, now that could be 30, or 390, because I can keep going around that circle and still having my terminal side there. But it is important that when you are choosing your values, you're only choosing values from the unit circle. We don't want any coterminal values. And we only use values in one of two quadrants for each of the inverse functions. So inverse cosine, if we're looking at cosine, we only are going to pick the value that occurs between 0 and pi, which is in radians, or 0 to 180, which is in degrees. We're never going to choose an angle that comes from quadrant 3 or quadrant 4. If I want the sine value, I'm always going to choose an angle between 0 and a negative pi over 2 and 0 and pi over 2. So between 0 and 90 or 0 and negative 90. Now you notice the notation there. It said from 0 to a negative 90. So I'm not going to use the value of, if it was right here, 270. I'd be using a negative 90, which is a negative pi over 2. I wouldn't be using a value here, which is normally at our 300 degree marker, 300 is the same as a negative 60, which is a negative pi over 3. I wouldn't be using our value at 315, that's a negative 45, which is a negative pi over 4. I wouldn't be using 30 or 200 or 330, I'd be using a negative 30 degrees which is a negative pi over 6. So if you happen to be choosing the trig value from quadrant 4, you are using the negative angle, not the positive angle, which is also going to be true for tangent. If you're trying to find the angle measure for tangent, remember it's always in two spots. We're not using quadrants 2 and 3. You're choosing from 1 and 4. And if you choose an angle from quadrant 4, we want the negative angles, not the positive angles. So if we go ahead and get started here, the first one we've got is find the what angle, so we're trying to find theta, what angle has a cosine, an x value of root 2 over 2. When I go to look at my unit circle, I'm going left root 2 over, oh, no, 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 I'm going right, it's positive, so I'm going to go right pi over 2. I'm looking which places am I going right 
pi over 2, which ones have x coordinates of pi over 2, and we see that's in two spots. That's at 45 degrees, and that's at 315. There will always be two possibilities. You've got to choose which one is correct. So we just said that if I'm looking for a cosine, I want to choose the value that's either occurring in 1 or 2. Well, my options were choosing from 1 or 4, which means the only answer that's going to work is 45 degrees, which is pi over 4. You want to choose the 1 that occurs in either quadrant 1 or 2. Now look at these notations. These mean exactly the same thing, just a different way to write it. So co what cosine of what angle gives us root 2 over 2? We know our inverse sine, if I'm looking for an angle measure, it's inverse sine of that value. So same thing, just different notation. That means I'm looking for what y value am I going a positive 1 half? Positive means I'm going up. So if I'm looking, where is my y value a positive 1 half? Well, that's at 30 degrees. I'm also going up a positive 1 half at 150. So those are my two locations that have a y value of 1 half. If I look over here, I have to choose the one that occurs in quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. So I can't choose the one that's in quadrant 2. I'm going to choose the one that's in quadrant 1, which is 30 degrees which is going to give us pi over 6. Last one, tangent of a negative root 3 over 3. Now in our unit circle, that's our purple. So we're looking, here's a negative root 3 over 3. Here's a negative root 3 over 3. So always two answers. We have a tangent value of a negative root 3 over 3 at 150 and at 330. When we think about tangent, I've got to choose the one that's either in quadrant 1 or quadrant 4, which means I cannot choose the 150, which means I've got to choose the 330. But we've got to be careful because I'm not going to write down 11 pi over 6 and 330. I need the negative angles. So that's at a negative 30 degrees, which is a negative pi over 6. Okay, for this next part, you need your calculator. So if you don't have your calculator out yet, go ahead and take it out, press pause. We're looking at our calculator here. And the first one that we want to, let me go ahead and fix this. We want to find out what angle has a cosine value of a negative 0.4531. We want degrees and radians. So if we hit our mode button, you can see that you have a radian mode and you have a degree mode. So it's already in radian mode. We may as well just give our first answer in radians. We need inverse. When we're looking for the angle measure, we're always using inverse trig. So I hit second cosine, giving us that inverse cosine of a negative 0 0.4531. Enter. And we can see that in radians, this is going to be about 2.0410 radians. Then I'm going to change the mode. So I go to mode. I change from radians to degrees. We hit enter. We go back to our home screen. I hit second mode, which quits. I just hit enter again. It recreates that exact same thing, but now we're in degree mode. So this is 116.9 degrees. Same thing for our next one. So now I want second sine of 4. We're in degree mode, and we get an error message. We're looking for sine. Now, this is not possible. We got an error message we go, go to. It brings us to our problem. Your sine value must always be between 0 and 1. So this ends up being not possible. If we look at your unit circle, your radius of the unit circle, the greatest, the biggest cosine can ever be is 1. The greatest sine can ever be 
is one as well. When you're going around the circle, the farthest you ever get away from the origin is one. So your cosine value can't be bigger than one. Your sine value can't be bigger than one. That's why this one is not possible. All right, here is our last question. A crane has a 200 foot arm whose lower end is five feet off the ground. The arm has to reach the top of the building, which is 130 feet high. What angle should the arm be set? So I want you to press pause right now and go ahead and draw your picture first. Okay, we see that a crane has a 200 foot arm. So here's the crane, here's the arm of the crane, that's 200 feet, whose lower end is five feet off the ground. So here, from here to here is five. The arm has to reach the top of a 300 foot 30 foot building. So here's my building. It's 130 feet above the ground, but from here to here is five, which means this much is only 125. What angle should the arm be set? So we're trying to find out what this theta is. Well, the 125 is opposite. This is the hypotenuse. So we think about what trig function relates opposite and hypotenuse, and that is your sine. So sine of theta it is opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, that's 125 over 200. You don't have to worry about simplifying that fraction. Your calculator does it for you. So we're asking our calculator the angle. What angle gives us our inverse sine value of 125 over 200? Back to our calculator. So clear out our error. Second sine. 125 divided by 200. That's going to give our angle is going to be about 38.7 degrees. Make one quick little switch into radians. Do that exact same calculation again and we find that it's going to be about 0.6751 radians. All right. And we are all done for today.